Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. The Premier's unveiled the first of six new child and family learning centres, a key promise from his time as Education Minister. But demand for child safety services is causing concern, with a key service swamped. Moilatina is Palawakani for to embrace. And while the crowd at Moilatina Child and Family Learning Centre weren't all embracing the Premier, <laughs> the Mayfield community's been involved in the centre's creation. We've had a local enabling group which has uh, consulted uh, with the development and the design. They're really contextualised to the community, but also to the latest research we know about how little people can learn and grow. Promised by the Premier himself back in 2018, this is the first of six new centres around the state. Nearing completion now at Wynyard and at West Olveston, and next year we'll see uh, new builds completed at Kingston and Glenorchy and Sorrell. But there are concerns about child safety services, with the advice and referral line recently overwhelmed. We know that at different times of the year there are spikes in the number of inquiries that come through, particularly around the end of school terms. If you want to uh, report at someone at risk, if you're a mandatory reporter, this is where you have to go. You need to ring this number, you need to report through that. So there's an obligation on the government then to make sure that they have sufficient people in that service. While the backlog's been cleared, it reportedly hit 600 messages. Staff illnesses contributing, while recruitment and retention woes continue, despite efforts to resolve them. If the Tasmanian Ambulance Service was unable to answer calls, there would be a hue and cry. So there should be a hue and cry in Tasmania now. The Minister making a commitment. Whenever there is known to be a child at risk of harm, they're seen within 24 hours, and no matter what. Any unanswered call is an investigation that is not started and the potential for children remaining at risk. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Two people have received serious injuries after crashing into a tree on the Tasman Highway today. Emergency services were called to the scene north of Tribunna about 10am. The driver and the front seat passenger were airlifted to the Royal Hobart Hospital. Three other passengers were treated for non-serious injuries at the scene. The highway reopened six hours later. Baker's Delight and the owners of the Kingston, Lindisfarne and Eastland stores will face court over allegations staff were underpaid. The Fair Work Ombudsman alleges 142 workers were underpaid more than $1.2 million between 2017 and 2020. All three were run by a franchisee who is also facing legal action. But the Ombudsman claims the company is also partially responsible, alleging they became aware of the issue but failed to take action. The matter goes before the Federal Court in Hobart on July 26. With time ticking down on her stay in emergency shelter, a Hobart woman says she feels let down by the lack of housing options. Bianca is reaching the limit of time she can stay at the shelter and says she's tried calling every provider for help. They've just put my name down continuously and everything like that. So, yeah, I've just got to wait now for a phone call. There aren't enough secure houses for her to move out of emergency accommodation into a more permanent arrangement. Asked what medium-term solutions are available, the Premier told reporters today the government will always support individual needs and wraparound services. Tasmanians are being put on notice amid a crackdown tackling anti-social behaviour on metro buses. It's as a new campaign launches across the state, warning passengers to hop on board and comply. Taking a stand. Antisocial and violent behaviour is just absolutely not OK. Metro and the Rail, Tram and Bus Union joining forces saying enough is enough, stamping out antisocial behaviour to protect those behind the wheel. Once I was driving a bus and there were three or four guys who didn't have the money and I offered them the free ride but when they got off the bus, instead of saying me thank you, they spat on the passenger door and abused me. Behaviour is, uh, is definitely impacting negatively on, on the bus driver shortage and, and worsening it. The It's Not OK campaign calling on the community to join the cause. Everyone deserves to feel safe on board a metro bus. Hoping to reduce the risk not only for drivers but also for passengers jumping aboard. And there's also uh, a message to say it's absolutely not OK to uh, cause issues with uh, other passengers on the bus as well. 
for the individuals involved, it's really serious and it really affects them. And that's not fair when they're just coming to work to do a great job in what they do. Spreading the word around the state, making sure workers feel comfortable and supported. The intention of the campaign is actually really simple and it's to really try and set expectations in the community around what is and what is not acceptable on a metro bus. Working together to ensure every Tasmanian gets from A to B safely. Victoria Eso, 7 Tasmania News. The future of the local government review needs clearing up, according to the key union representing council workers. ASU Tasmania Chief Samantha Batchelor says any efficiencies must not come at the cost of jobs, despite the government taking forced amalgamations off the table. What's fundamental here is that the direct employment of local people stays with local communities and local councils. Making mergers voluntary has been welcomed by the local government association and other stakeholders. The state's recreational fishers will soon have access to waters not fished since 2008. From December, recreational rock lobster anglers will be able to drop a cray pot in nearly 130 hectares of water off the state's east coast, all in the name of research. Recreational fishers rejoicing. For 15 years, rock lobster fishermen have been banned from two areas off the state's east coast. But that's about to change. Elephant Rock and North Bay from December are going to be open only to recreational fishers. So this hasn't been available to rec fishers or to commercial fishers for quite some time. The move welcomed by the independent body representing the state's recreational fishers. Tasmania's recreational fishers have an opportunity to access these amazing areas. They have not been fished for over a decade, so this is going to be fishing like we haven't seen on the east coast um, in generations. For more than a decade, the area has been used as a ground for research. A body of work's been done there regarding the really invasive urchin um, Centrostephanus that's been coming down the east coast of Australia. And so that body of work uh, around Centrostephanus has now completed. Paving the way for a new project, now looking at the habits of keen anglers. The purpose of the research will also help the government understand if we can actually expand recreational only areas and what benefits they actually provide. It's something that's very dear to recreational fishers' hearts. The announcement part of a 2021 election commitment to catch shared rock lobster. So if you've got a couple of mates and you go out in a boat and you both put a pot down and one comes up empty and one's got four donkeys in it, um, you'll now be able to share that catch. With pots at the ready, there's no doubt everyone will be trying their hand at catching a big one this cray season. Talia Jordan, 7 Tasmania News. There's a growing mystery in Launceston with a car found submerged at Waverley Lake Park. It's unclear how or why the small black vehicle ended up in the body of water, nor how long it's been there. Police and the Launceston City Council have been notified. One of Southern Tasmania's largest netball programs will no longer be bound by the weather. The South East Netball Association is scoring an $8,000 grant to take a popular kids' initiative indoors, ensuring it can run every week. Getting first contact with one of our most popular sports, the South East Sun's Net Set Go program at Sorel has given hundreds of local children a taste of netball. Running from September until December, fickle weather has played havoc. So we've had, you know, sun, it's been 30 degrees heat and we've had wind and we've had rain. Those late cancellations causing frustration. Some families driving up to an hour to take part. We've got them out of the door, we've convinced them to come. They're then very excited about it and now we're having to say, oh, we're going home now because it's not on. Very frustrating. And why is it frustrating? Because we don't get to play. We can't play if it rains. The doors are now opening for the program. They've secured $8,000 through Woolworths' Pick Fresh, Play Fresh grants program. The cash injection helping cover the cost of hiring South East Stadium. Now um, we'll be able to do that without the cost club um, occurring those costs which that's what we've done for the last 10 years. And to have this here gives them that encouragement to be able to know that it's going to be here for the long haul. Also helping buy new equipment on and off the court. We're going to purchase some blenders to make some great smoothies at the end of our program so excited about that one. With a roof over their head the association is now looking forward considering expanding the program into winter, a time traditionally unsuitable. The new home already a winner with the little ones. Get to stay nice and dry from the rain. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News.
Tasmanians will have two chances to watch the Kangaroos in action in the upcoming AFLW season. The side will open its season at Blunston Arena against St Kilda on September 3. The Roos will then venture to Launceston in Round 4, hosting the Lions at UTAS Stadium on September 24. Both games will also be screened on 7 Tasmania. North Launceston is eyeing off top of the ladder, fresh off its 16-point win over Lauderdale, the club's 10th scalp in a row. The Northern Bombers are now sitting second to Kingborough, but only by percentage. We don't play at home for a month or so, so just happy to keep finding a way to win. I think if we can find a way to win these last six games now, then we'll, we should finish on top. They'll be hoping to do just that when they face crosstown rival Launceston this weekend. And the man we just heard from, Ben Simpson, he features in this week's Crips TSL Player of the Year votes for Round 14. Simpson claim three for North, Sam Siggins and Fletcher Bennett also polled. Clarence's Baxter Norton scored three votes after two goals in the game against Glenorchy. And James Webb was best on ground in the Tigers' four-point thriller against the Blues. Siggins is on top of the leaderboard on 15. There's a logjam below with Brodie Powfreyman, Simpson and Jack Tompkinson all tied on 12. Devonport's coach hopes the side's big win over Glenorchy will give them some breathing space in the NPL title race. After a challenging fortnight, the strikers' victory on Saturday put them seven points clear of the Knights at the top of the table. The club remains focused on the present, despite their upcoming Australia Cup match on the Gold Coast. But to stay one game at a time and just keep getting the results we need to get allows us to then go away with that bit more freedom and know that we've got a bit of a buffer. In the Women's Super League, South Hobart is hoping its 1-0 win over Launceston United will ease some nerves. It should give us confidence to be a bit more creative and be a bit more relaxed as we go into our last six games. The Reds are 12 points clear at the top of the ladder. The Hobart Hurricanes will have the third pick for this year's Big Bash Overseas Player Draft. The Stars will have the first choice, while the Canes women's side will have the fifth pick in the draft. Today, Hobart, the state's top with 17 degrees. Launceston, Devonport and Burnie, all 15. Bushy Park, 17, 16 for Friendly Beaches and Grove. Smithton, 15, also 15 for Marai Island, Strawn and St Helens. The Islands and Lowhead, 14 and 8 for Liwini. Mostly cloudy conditions about the west and north of Tasmania today, with partial cloud covering the remainder of the state. Low cloud about the west and north as a frontal cloud band builds to the west. A ridge lies across southern Australia, bringing clear skies over Victoria and southern New South Wales. Tomorrow the cold front will have moved over the state while the ridge remains well to the north with a high centred over SA and the Bight. Northwesterly winds tomorrow 30 to 40 knots about southern and western waters and up to 30 knots elsewhere. A southwesterly change will cross during the morning and early afternoon. The west and south can expect west to southwesterly swells 5 to 6 metres. A gale warning has been issued for all coastal waters statewide tomorrow. A strong wind warning is in place for Frederick Henry, Norfolk and Storm Bay, the Channel, Southwest Lakes, Bank Strait and Franklin Sound. There is also a sheep grazing as alert for the southeast. Tomorrow, Hobart and 14 also showers for Adventure Bay and Taralea. Launceston and Devonport both showers with 13, with showers easing in Bridport. Burnie and Strawn can expect a top of 12, windy in Marawar. St Helens and Swansea both 14, showers and windy in Whitemark, 13's the top there. And to the three-day forecast, Wednesday, patches of morning frost and fog, otherwise fine, until light showers, which are likely to develop apart elevated parts of the northwest. Thursday, isolated morning showers about elevated parts of the north, showers developing about the west, then extending to the remainder of the north during the afternoon. Friday, early showers about the west, far south and Bass Strait Islands, easing and contracting to the west during the morning, snow to 900 metres. Taking a look at the mainland tomorrow, Darwin 33, a shower or two in Brisbane and Melbourne, partly cloudy in Canberra. And currently in Hobart, it's partly cloudy with 13 degrees, also partly cloudy in Launceston and a possible shower for Devonport and 12. That's all from me tonight, Kim. That is all your news. As always, thanks for joining us. For now, it's good night.